Good morning and welcome to University Baptist Church on this Communion Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. For anyone watching who doesn't know me, my name is David Tomasachi and I'm the Director of Music here at University Baptist Church. At any time, you can pause and check out this video's description to see listed there today's worship order, leaders, and musicians. I'll also take this moment to invite each of you to sing along during our Gathering and Approaching God hymns, the Doxology, and our traditional UBC Communion Sunday Hymn of Departure, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Our message in music today is the haunting Lenten Amen by Hannah Sturman Wilson, which was written for and premiered by the UBC Choir during Lent of 2019. Hannah, who is the Assistant Director of Choral Activities and Head Director of the Women's Chorale and Women's Chorus at Hilliard Darby High School, has been a frequent guest musician and conductor at UBC over the past few years and the knowledge, expertise, and joy for choral singing she brings has greatly enriched the choir's worship with each encounter. And now, I invite you all to rise in your spirits, to come and share the Lord, and to join us in worship. Welcome to University Baptist Church. We gather here Watkins. I'm the associate pastor of University Baptist Church, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, most of you know me. Uh, some of you, if you're new to our, our congregation, if you've bumped into this uh, virtual service or if someone has referred it to you and offered it to you as a gift, uh, I want to give you a special welcome. Uh, today's the first Sunday of the month. Um, the custom of our church is to celebrate communion on the first Sunday of the month and, and in a bit. Uh, Pastor Bill uh, Tatum will be will be inviting you to join him in communion. Uh, you might want to at this time to pause the the video uh, to find um, some substance uh, that you can use with the communion. Um, traditionally, Jesus used Jesus uh, took what was available. He took bread from the Passover dinner uh, meal. He took wine from the Passover meal. And he used these to commemorate uh, what we call the Lord's Supper, or it's also called communion. So welcome. I hope my prayer is that we will experience communion with, with, with Christ in this time. Um, that the music, the prayers, uh, the scriptures read, the sermon shared, uh, and the breaking of the bread and the drinking from the cup. All will, 
all will unite us with Christ who lives within us um, and who cares for us and loves us. Please join in the call to worship. Come all who are hungry and thirsty. The Lord will provide for, for our needs. Come this day to the table of the Lord. Here, Here we, we will find, find welcome and sustenance. Come to this time of gathering and praise. Lord, Lord we come with open hearts and spirits to receive your gracious gift of love. Amen. Amen. And now the invocation. Saving God, we come to you this day from times that are hectic. We are pulled in many directions, though restricted as to where we can go. Open our hearts to receive you. Deliver us from the temptation to just give up and flounder in the rough waters of life. Reach out to us with your strength and power and bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, and now, now the, the prayer, prayer of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, the power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children.
Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship. My name is Bill Tatum, and I am interim pastor at University Baptist Church. As we share together today, our, our focus is the passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. This is the place in Matthew where the feeding of the 5,000 is told. Other than the resurrection of Jesus, this story, the feeding of the 5,000, is the only miracle story that is told in all four Gospels. Each of the Gospels has details not found in the others, and our reading for Matthew that, that was shared just a few moments ago is the most pared-down version of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Perhaps you have seen uh, this, a copy or a similar copy of Gospel Parallels, and in Gospel Parallels, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are laid side by side, and there is uh, a way of looking at the differences in each of the, the three versions. Now, I know you can't see it very well, but if you look at the, the page that is visible there, you will see that there are gaps in Matthew and Luke, a lot of blank area. And then the middle one, which is Mark, is uh, is solid print. So Mark has the has the fullest story of the feeding of five thousand, and Matthew and Luke are less. Um, and Matthew uh, the most pared down of those three versions. And then the Gospel of John tells the story in a different way. So we have this gospel story. The feeding of the 5,000 that is told in all four Gospels, and after a word of prayer, we will reflect on the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Let us bow together in prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, we do thank you for the privilege of sharing this time together. And God, we pray that you would bless us, and as we seek to understand this word of Scripture we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. So, as we consider our gospel story for this morning, we set the scene using material from all of the, the gospel tellings of this particular miracle story. So we set the scene using Matthew as well as the other gospel accounts. So see if you can, can picture the scene. Jesus and the disciples are sitting on a hillside. They spot a big crowd. We are told uh, that there were 5,000 men. doesn't tell us how many women and children were there, but some have have guessed that including everybody that was there, there may have been 25,000 people in that place. So we have Jesus, the disciples, and a big crowd all together around the Sea of Galilee. And so our story begins. So from his vantage point on the hillside, Jesus saw people in need. They were tired, hungry, sick. Jesus had compassion on them, and he healed their sick, as the story tells us. And the risen Christ, now, the risen Christ sees the need that we have in our world as well. He sees those who are hungry and hurting. He sees those who have spiritual needs. Jesus sees our needs. So as we think about our world community, 
We are experiencing, as you know, a pandemic. We are suffering from this. And, and the risen Christ sees this need. Many of us feel the, the political chaos in our, our institutions. And Jesus sees this as well. And Jesus sees the need that we have for social justice. So friends, as Jesus looked out from that hillside, he saw the need of the people, the many needs of the people. And as the risen Christ sees our world, the risen Christ sees the need, the many needs that are in our world. Well, as we said earlier, the disciples were there and they saw the need of the people as well. Evening was approaching. They were in a remote place and there were thousands of people that were there. Now they knew that the people were hungry and so the question occurred to them, what was to be done? And so certainly we have to give them credit for seeing that there was a need. But they wondered what could be done. And here was their first reaction. We find it in verse 15 of our passage of Scripture. Send the crowds away so they, go, they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. And so see the disciples saw that that there was a need, but essentially they just threw their hands up and said, "Well, there's a need there, but there's not really anything we can do about it. There's no way, no how that we can meet the need that is present." Perhaps we feel that way sometimes. We see the needs in our own lives, in our church, in the larger community, and we say, well, what can we do about that? What can we do to meet the need that is out there? We see the injustice in the world. And many say, well, as an individual, there's not really anything I can do about it. You see the challenges that the University Baptist Church faces, especially in this time of, of global pandemic. And you wonder, what is it that, that we can do to improve our outreach in the community? And what is it that we can do to be growing and more effective in, in what God is calling us to do? We see the, the challenges that the political chaos in our world presents to us. And we wonder too, what is it that we can do? And so, the disciples, as they saw all those people out in the, on the hillside, they saw that they were going to need food, and they said to Jesus, well, what can we do? Let's just send them away and let them fend for themselves. But Jesus would not settle for that. He said to the disciples, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. You know, I like for us to just kind of settle over that. For just a moment. First word in that sentence. You give them something to eat. It is within your power to do something about this situation. And the disciples respond and say, We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. 
So they're saying to Jesus, well, what in the world can we do about this? What can we do? There's not anything within our power to, that we can do to, to help this situation. And Jesus says, bring them here to me. Bring those fish and those pieces of bread to me and see what I can do. And we know what happens next. All the people ate and were satisfied and there, there was more than enough to go around. And so friends, I believe what Jesus presents to us here is a way of thinking about how good can be done in the world. We think about our, the challenges that we, we face as a church community and as a, a national and world community. And what the gospel story is saying to us, you do something about it. There is something you can do, and God's going to be walking with you, even if it seems like a secular thing. God is going to be walking with you, and God will make something out of it. So we think about the political chaos that many of us feel we, we have in this country. So what is it that, that we can do? What is it that we can do as individuals? I'm preach, probably preaching to the choir here, but of course we can go out and vote. And this is going to be probably the most challenging year that most of us have experienced to be able to cast a vote, but that's something that we can do. Something that we can do and exercise our rights in this country and community. And I think about the, the legacy of Representative Lewis and think about what John Lewis stood for as a, as a civil rights warrior and as a, as a representative working tirelessly to see to it that people who had been disenfranchised would be able to cast a ballot. We can cast a ballot, even if it's hard, even if it's challenging. We can, do, we can cast a ballot and we can do everything we can to support those groups and organizations that are trying to make the vote accessible to as many people in this coming election. You give them something to eat, Jesus says. And so as we think about the political upheaval in our community and in our country, we can do something. We can get out and we can vote. And we think about the pandemic that continues to sweep across our country and across the world. Many of our conservative brothers and sisters feel that God is going to provide a protective umbrella so that they'll be affected by it. They won't be affected by the pandemic. But tragically, we have seen over and over again that, that this has not been the case, that so many Churches that opened too early have had to, to close back down again, and, and big rallies in churches have, have had tragic results. But Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And so there are things that we can do, and, and sadly many reject doing these simple things that we can do to have an impact on the pandemic. I have here uh, a mask that a friend made for, for me. Uh, I have a, a lot of disposable ones as well. I prefer those. They seem to, to be more comfortable and in the, the Lexington heat seem to, seem to be a little bit easier to wear. 
And so I know we've all heard this over and over again. And again, I'm, pr I'm probably preaching to the choir. But we can wear a mask and we can practice social distancing. You give them something to eat, Jesus says. You do something. You do the things that are within your power. God doesn't expect us to do something we can't do, but God does expect us to do something that we can do. And then think about the challenges that the University Baptist Church faces. You are more familiar with these challenges than, than I am. There are challenges that many other churches experience. Well, there are some things that we can do, that individuals can do to help meet these challenges. And I just want to focus on, on one thing for just a moment. And this is the recognition that at times we need to, to look with open hearts and minds and think about doing things differently than we have done them in the past. Being open to a new way that God is leading us. New approaches to ministry. Making ourselves aware of new opportunities to reach out to the community and to show the love and grace and forgiveness of Christ. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Friends, we think about our gospel story for this morning, and we, we think about how Jesus and his disciples interact. Jesus and the disciples, they, they have compassion on those folks that they see out on that hillside who have walked a long distance and how they, they need to have their physical needs met. The disciples think they're, well, that's, that's too big. That's too big a job for us. There's nothing we can do about it. There's no way that we can meet that need. But Jesus says, hold on a minute. There is something that you can do. You come and bring what you have. You do what you can do. And I'm going to bless it and I'm going to make it enough. So friends, my, my faith is that in the challenges that we have as a community, as a nation, as a world, that if we will bring what we have to the task, if we will do what we can do, God is going to be with us. And God is going to bless us. God is going to help us meet these challenges. And God is going to, to make what we bring enough. You give them something to eat, Jesus says. God will take what we bring and what we offer, and God will make it enough. Please bow with me for prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, we do thank you for this word of scripture. And God, we pray that as we hear these words of Jesus, as we hear the challenge that Jesus gives to his disciples, that you as the risen Christ, as the holy God, as the ever-present Holy Spirit, challenge us to give what we have. And you're going to be with us, you're going to be walking with us, and you're going to make it enough. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer. Amen.
name is Julius Mayo, and at this time I would invite you to please join me for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Holy Creator, we thank you for the many blessings and grace that you have given us each and every day. We thank you for another day of life and for the opportunity to come together once again to celebrate your great love. Holy Father, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate beautiful summer days, for the opportunity to see each other, although it may be virtual, or through socially distanced means. Well, we thank you for that opportunity to know that not only are you there, but that there are others who care for us as well. Holy Creator, we also come to you with, with concerns over the loss of loved ones, over the ongoing challenges of COVID-19, over fears over job insecurity, over civil unrest and racial injustice, over just not knowing what comes next. Lord, we need you now more than ever, and we ask for your continued grace and love in all that we do. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of thy Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. This is a time in our service that we call the offertory. Uh, it's the time when we reflect on God's goodness to us. Uh, we realize that uh, God is a part of our lives. God has given to us. Even the breath we take is gift. It's also a time when we reflect, think about how do we want to give of our, the resources God's given to us, give back to God. Um, normally, uh, we would pass a plate, something, one of these plates. We would pass plate, plates among you if you were here in this congregation. And then they would come up, and, I was, and one of us, uh, one of the pastors would, would, or a lay person, would, would uh, bless the offering. Um, and we would ask God to use this offering. Of course, in this virtual way, that's impossible. So how can you support University Baptist Church? Uh, you can send a check to 50 West Lane Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43231. Uh, mail is checked daily, and, uh, and, and your, uh, your check then will be uh, applied and passed through University Baptist Church into the work of the kingdom. Or you can go online to ubccolumbus.org and um, scroll down and there's a place for you to indicate that you'd like to donate. You can even set that up to donate on a regular basis. So I invite you to, at this time, to reflect on God's goodness and to offer yourselves to God, not just your, your financial resources, but yourself to God in a, in a new way. Let us pray. God, I give you thanks for this time that we have gathered virtually. I give you thanks for all your good things. As we pray, remind us of these things. Remind us of your love for us, your presence in our lives, and your presence around us. Bless these gifts, which will be given for the work of your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. together to share this time of Lord's Supper, this time of communion, and we invite everyone who loves the Lord to share with us 
in this time of communion. Now, uh, we want to encourage you, if you have not made available for yourself something to drink and a bread or bread substitute, to go ahead and, and stop the video and, and get those things that, that will enable you to participate with us. So a drink of any kind and a bread or bread substitute. Uh, please feel free to, to stop the video to get those things and, and join us for the sharing of the Lord's Supper. As we begin to think about sharing the supper, I uh, want to call your attention to those wonderful words of Scripture that we find in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26, where the Apostle Paul passes along to us the tradition that he have, has received. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please bow with me for a moment of prayer. Oh God, we lift up our voices in prayers to you. We trust that you are the one great God who embraces our differences yet rejoices in our community. And that community is exemplified in this act of communion, communion that we share. Amen. We embrace a piece of the common love. Friends, our common need for nourishment unites us together as the body of Christ. And we ask that the holy bread of life create in us sustenance for the journey, calm for troubled stomachs, grace-filled movement for aching limbs, and joyful activity for our bodies. We seek to live together in community, and that community is symbolized by the bread that we all share now. And then, sharing one cup, we drink of Christ's new covenant of unity. Please bow with me for prayer. O oh God, we thank you for the gift of the bread and of the cup. And God, we pray that you will empower us that during these days in which we cannot be together physically, that these elements unite us in spirit and that we are one in you. We offer this prayer in the name of, of Christ who unites us all. Amen. Please hear these words as we prepare for the benediction. May God's peace carry, keep, and hold you. May God's love nourish, bless, and enfold you. May God's spirit inspire, lift, and mold you. May the almighty God, triune, holy, and blessed, be with you now and forever. Please bow with me for prayer. Oh, kind and gracious God, we, we do thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for this worship service that we have been able to share. And God, we, we pray that you will sustain us as we, seek, as we seek to continue serving you and loving each other in these difficult days. 
We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that Yeah.